Good afternoon. I'd like to welcome you to the fourth session of the Urban School Food Alliance Local Food Procurement um, mini series. We've been uh, experiencing or learning about best practices on local procurement from some great leaders in our industry. Today, I'd like to introduce Bertrand Weber, who is the director for Minneapolis Public Schools Culinary and Wellness Services. Bertrand's career spans over 40 years of management experience in hospitality industry and school food service. Bertrand worked and managed some of the finest hotels and in 2003 transitioned to school food service at Hopkins School District in Minnesota. Bertrand's progressive thinking received national recognition, including several University of Minnesota research papers. He started a farm to school program in 2013 and Minneapolis Public Schools is now on the leading edge of the farm to school contracting forward with 15 farmers. I'll turn it over to you, Bertrand. Good afternoon. Thank you, Jill. I'm thrilled to be here and share what we're doing in Minneapolis. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And All right. So again, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Bertrand Weber, I've been with Minneapolis since 2012. In 2013, I uh, started a farm to school uh, program and hired uh, a contact at could not hire a farm to school coordinator at the time because of the logistics within the school district. So I hire Andrea as a contractor and we started our, in ish, our initial smoking of how to uh, contract forward. In 2013, we contracted forward or we started our initial RFP and we had a total of six farms that we worked with. The beginning was very rocky, and every year we learned from what we've learned. Uh, we worked with USDA on many different aspects of how to refine our procurement process. So what I'm gonna share with you today is really the focus on local procurement around farm to school, uh, produce, protein, and how we, we move forward and build relationship with our farmers. So currently, we, uh, we are now contracting forward with 15 farms and farm cooperatives, uh, roughly 40 different types of fruits and vegetables. Being in Minnesota, we don't have a lot of fruit uh, that's being grown here. So it's primarily vegetables, but we do a few fruits in the fall. And we do also do some protein primarily free-range turkey and beef. Uh, when we looked at procurement, when we looked at farm to school and local sourcing, it was important for us to identify the difference between what would be viewed as farm to school and what would be viewed as local. So we identified farm to school as when we are uh, contracting and working directly with the farm. The farms are small to mid-sized, sustainable farmers, emerging farmers, and that are within a hundred mile radius. We did not identify it as being Minnesota because the Twin Cities is only 30 miles from Wisconsin. So to us, anything within that hundred mile radius made sense. So that's what we call farm to school. And all of those farmers then are contracted or we, we do an RFP and those are farm to school. The local are some of the larger manufacturers. It's some produce that we buy directly through our uh, vendor, our broadline distributors, our produce company. And they could also, we do focus a lot on local small uh, producers, whether it be Bread, bread product, tortillas, sauces, anything that's produced within Minneapolis. So we looked at what are the benefits of contracting forward for us. And from the very beginning, we saw that 
by having the contract forward, we ensure our desired product. We tested a lot of time looking at what was available at the time, making monthly RFPs. This does not work as you're trying to develop your cycle menus, your long-term uh, supply. So by contracting forward, the benefit to us is it ensures our desired product short of, as we know, uh, it's dependent on nature. So, you know, we could have a hailstorm and actually have a great story about a hailstorm, but those, those kind of things happen. Contracting forward allows us time for onboarding and training of the farmers to meet our requirements. Uh, it certainly helped with the menu planning because now we know exactly within a couple of weeks when certain items will be coming. Uh, it gives us the ability to upfront select the farmers uh, so that we have we we really know who we're working with, and it allows us the ability to build long-term partnerships. All of the farms that we started working with in 2013 are still with us, and they are they. They are every single year entering into a new, or uh, they're filling out the RFP, and we have continued to build with them and continue to increase uh, what we purchase from them. Uh, obviously, there has to be two sides to the story. So the benefits to the farm, especially when you're talking about small emerging farmers, is ensuring them outlet for the produce. And that was really important for us as we're helping them develop their market so that when we guarantee them a certain amount of, of purchases, it's one less thing they have to worry about from a marketing perspective, from having to label their product, having to make many different uh, deliveries, it ensures them an outlet for all of their produce. Uh, it gives them time for sufficient planning, and we'll go through the, the, the RFP, the timeline, but by February, they know uh, if they want, if we're awarding them a specific item. So it gives them special, gives them ample time for them to plan and do their planning. Uh, it gives them the ability to grow specialized, specific products just for us. And the, the next one, investment in the farm, because they are guaranteed an outlet for their produce, they're guaranteed an income. And that is a huge benefit for some of the small farms, as well as long-term partnerships. And once they start working with us, what we found out it gives, it gives them access to other markets that they otherwise would not have had the opportunity. So it's really a win-win for both schools and the farmers, at least for our size district. So I didn't go into the whole statistic about our district, but we are roughly, uh, we're just about 32,000 students. So we're not a huge urban district. We're within the boundaries of Minneapolis. Uh, we have 66 schools, and that size really allows us a lot of flexibility in what we can do and, and the ability to contract with some smaller farms or aggregators. So we do an RFP every single year. Uh, it's an annual competitive bid process, and it's open to all interested farm, farm cooperatives, food hub aggregators, and it's distributed. Uh, it's obviously on the district website, and the Minnesota Department of Agriculture sends it out or sends the notice to all of their listserv to let them know that the RFP is going out. Now, I want to clarify that this is an RFP, and it's an annual competitive bid process and we go through the bid selection and we award them <clears throat> a good faith contract 
but we will then redirect them and they work directly with our produce company. So we have a personal relationship with the farmer. We guarantee him a certain amount of purchases and then we redirect them to our produce company. What we provide in the RFP, which is really important because the farm, the farmer, and the farmer to a more use. So we give them an overview of our operation and the farm control program, what it means to us, our values, uh, the size of the district, what we expect out of them. Uh, <clears throat> we spell out what is our expectation from a food safety plan, whether they're GAP certified, whether they have a safety plan, their liability insurance, traceability, produce quality specification. We are upfront about they will have to attend training that we put out every single year because it's important and we partner with the University of Minnesota as well as we will do site visits. All that is spelled out in the RFP. Uh, we also spelled out the farm to school process the ordering process, the delivery, the invoicing, and the payment. And obviously the most important one is all of the items that we're seeking to buy. Now, we put out there all of the things we anticipate buying and we go through a process with our menu team, with our executive chef, where we actually plan what item we would use when. And when we build our menus, we build our menus based on the anticipation of some of those products being available. Uh, what we ask in return for the RFP is the farm information, if they have had any experience, any reference, uh, <clears throat> any questions they might have, including their organization, equity, diversity, commitment to sustainability. We ask them for their food safety. And obviously now that we provided them with the list of items we're looking for, then they're in return giving us the produce or fruit or protein that they're able to supply us when and what quantity and in what price. And that's also important because then that gives us the ability to either source it from one, one farm, two farm, or an aggregator, and we can decide uh, how we do it. What we found out is that when a new farmer enters, or for, if it's the first time that they do the RFP, we might award them a smaller amount of one particular produce just to give them an opportunity to, to test how it's going to work for them and for us to have an ability to also uh, find out how they're going to work for us directly. Our timeline is in mid-December, uh, before the actual RFP is out, we do send through a listserv that we have an information meeting for, for, for prospective growers so that we give them all of the information that they will need to know before they actually do an RFP. In mid-January, we do issue the uh, issue of farm to school RFP through the school district. Uh, the district procurement office is the one that actually does all of the, the posting. Uh, we write the RFP, but they do all of the posting. In mid-February, the proposals are due. And by late February, early March, we award, we award the produce to the farms. I mentioned it before, the way we work is we will award specific amount to the farm or the aggregators, which then will go to the produce company, then will go to our culinary center or our school. So it's really seamless, but we do not receive any specific product directly into our system. Everything goes through a produce company, which is an extra step in safety as well as processing and cleaning a product. What was really important is to be able to follow the USDA procurement process, but yet allow us to have 
value-based scoring for those farmers. So we work directly in partnership with USDA to make sure that we were within regulations. We got our hands slapped a couple of times in the early stage of doing actually uh, uh, protein RFPs. But again, working directly with USDA, we were able to make sure that we are in compliance with procurement rules, yet able to have a value-based scoring. Uh, the scoring system use a multiplication factor to apply to each farm bid. So everything being equal, if all farmers have the same price, the value-based scoring will multiply that price based on the score they establish. And the higher the score, the cheaper their price will become. So it's really, it's, it, it seems complicated up front, but it is seamless and it works very well and allows us to, to again, uh, work with farmers that follow our values. Uh, this, is the, this is the actual uh, selection criteria. So you have high quality, you have food safety, you have customer service, sustainability, equity, organizational capacity, community, and value alignment. Of course, price is always one, but all of those factors then affect the price and gives us the ability to select a specific uh, farm based on their commitment, based on our selection. So what we've learned over the years is we, we have to look at the item that makes sense for our contract that makes sense for us. Uh, we've made a lot of mistakes in the early years in over anticipating or overestimating usage of certain items. And we have had a couple of years where we had tail coming out of our ears. However, because we committed to the farmers, we have always held true to our commitment and we found a way to use it. Uh, you, you have to set reasonable expectation with farm through the RFP, and it has to be a two-way street. We're committed to them, and they have to be committed to us. So we will understand that there are some outside factor that might affect their production. We will never penalize them for that. At the same time, even things like when we had COVID that hit us, we stayed true to our RFP and were able to use the majority of our products that we committed, there were a few that unfortunately we could not because of circumstance. So all of that is built through relationship and knowing your farmers, building that trust with them because we're working directly with them and we're, we're becoming kind of their, uh, we're walking them through the process with the produce company. And every year we tweak the process to make something different, to improve it. Uh, building that relationship, onboarding every single year, whether they've been with us for 10, for eight years, nine years, or two years, they go through the onboarding process every single year. They go through a safety program every single year. We invite them into our facility because they need to understand and they need to know what our facility, facility looks like the same that we're going to visit their facility. We then tour them to our produce company. So same thing. They need to build that relationship with the produce company. So we make sure that we introduce them to our produce company. They will see where their produce go. They will see the pr processing facility. And then we invite them into our cafeteria because ultimately they need to see where their produce is going to end up. Just going to show, showcase a few of our farmers that have been with us. This is our turkey farmer. We're going on over 11 years with him. We have turkey, burger, turkey burgers. We do turkey meatloaf. We do turkey tacos. We do chili. We do actually, he developed a turkey hot dog for us. This is a third generation farmer. Uh, we visit his farm every single year. He is part of our community. 
and that's building that, that relationship. Ray grows butternut, has grown butternut for us for nine years. And one of the, the stories she tells us all the time is when she plants butternut, she harvests the entire field. She doesn't have to size, she doesn't have to label them. It's the entire field comes to us and she, will, she has come back every single year. Uh, ben has actually grown carrot for us now also for nine years. One of the success with Ben is he came to us about eight years ago and he's an organic farmer and he had just purchased a, a, a new plot of land that was conventional. And he asked if he could grow all of our carrot on the conventional land while it was transitioning uh, to be an organic, following the organic practice. So what developed out of it is we were able to get organically grown carrot for our students. He was able to utilize the land that otherwise he would have had to grow cover crop because you cannot sell organic product on conventional land for five years. So we guaranteed him an income and we got organically grown care for our students. Those kind of relationships you do not find going through, you know, the majority of a broad line distributor. You've got to build those partnerships with your farmers. The Hmong Farmer Association, they're all emerging uh, Hmong farmers, and we've now worked with them for uh, about nine years as well. They're very diversified. We've had some interesting stories with them, some good, not, not so good, but it's been a learning curve and it's really helped them become better farmer and it's helped us also build a relationship with the Hmong community within our school district. This I'm showing because part of the success of our program is because we celebrate our farm. And every year in the fall, we have a farm to school barbecue. And here you're actually, this is our corn shucking contest with the commissioner of agriculture uh, has been one of the shucker now for the last three years. But it really celebrates our farmers, showcases to our community, our commitment to the local economy, to the local farmers and gives the kids an opportunity to actually connect with the farmers. And with that, we have about six minutes that I've, I've left in case anybody has questions, and I will be happy to answer any of the questions that you may have. Thank you. Thank you, Bertrand. Um, does anyone have any questions they'd like to ask Bertrand? Uh, this is Lauren. Sorry, I can't turn my camera on. My my Zoom is crazy. I think what you're doing is phenomenal. Um, and I'd, we actually have a, uh, a farm to school grant right now where we're trying to figure out how to um, do more farm to school procurement. So I'd, I'd love to set up a, a follow up call maybe with you and the, uh, we're working with Alice Waters Institutes and um, Share Plate Strategies um, to figure this out. Um, is it possible that you can share that RFP uh, uh, with us? Uh, absolutely. So uh, the RFP is available on our website, as well as eight years ago. I think it's eight years ago. <laughs> it's going so fast. Andrea, who's now works for USDA, in in partnership with USDA, developed a farm to school toolkit that walks you through the process. And that's also downloadable on our website. If you can't find them, email me directly. I'll be happy to email you both of them. 
Okay. And then do, does most of your farm to school stuff, are you processing that at the school sites themselves or in your central kitchen? Or did you have any problems with uh, food safety aspects of things coming from the farm um, and then putting them into schools? So all, all of the items go through our produce company. Everything is directed to the produce company and they either repack it, uh, leaving it whole, or process it. So like, for example, the butternut squash will come to us uh, peeled and diced. Oh, awesome. Uh, cucumbers will be repacked to either be in bins for the nutrition center, they will be in cases for the schools, or they might even be sliced for the schools that don't have kitchen. So it depends on our need. Uh, but everything goes through the produce company. Same with the carrots. Carrots will come whole to the nutrition center. Uh, they will come, say, uh, in sticks for our salad bars for the schools. Uh, so it depends the need, but everything goes through the produce company, which gives us, uh, you know, an extra safety measure because the produce company is responsible to receive and inspect everything as it comes in. Excellent. So then you're, you're, you have an RFP for your produce company that matches with the processing to match up with your farm to school RFP. Correct. So the uh, produce company RFP has one of the ch chapter, if you will, is, an, is a farm to school processing and receiving us, is in the RFP for our produce company, in addition to just the standard produce that they give us. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, I really and, look and I'm happy to share that one as well. It, it should be on the district website, but again, happy to share it. So, uh, Jill, if you want to make sure to share my email, I'm happy to, to share any of the, this information directly with specific mm -hmm. uh, directors. I'll do that. Yep. Thank you, Bertrand. What you, what you do is so phenomenally awesome. I, I wish we could just start with a fraction of what you do um, uh, but you, your your practices and your the things that you are doing are setting the foundation for the rest of us to start to move forward and I really truly appreciate that you're welcome there is a question here about the turkey the turkey is in our farm to school RFP uh, and and ironically it's it's one of those where our it's either Within Minnesota, we either have Genio or we have Ferndale Market. There's very, very little in between. So we're following the competitive process. But John Peterson is the only one that meets the requirement. So he's part of the Farm to School RFP every single year. We also always have a segment that gives producers, farmers the opportunity to plug in specific say. Hey, I'm doing eggs. Would you be interested in eggs? This is our uh, this is our price. This is our specs. Liz, did you have a question? Yeah, I was just um, uh, curious if uh, you could share the contact that you worked with on um, the contract at USDA. Um, or if it was just someone at your regional office and we should be now, so at the time, uh, do you know Andrea Northup? She's part of yes. the central. So Andrea is the one who worked with USDA in developing the RFP. I'm not sure who she worked with, but if you reach out to her, she's part of Mountain Plain. She can tell you who she worked with at the time. Uh, I think it might have been, uh, oh my God. I'm trying to think who it was. She'll let she'll tell you, and she's not part of the USDA team, so she can let you know for sure. Thanks. You're welcome. Any other questions for Bertrand? The micro purchase will do opportunity purchase, which most of them will fall under micro. If a farm has something specific, they'll reach out to us and say, hey, we have an abundance of this. Would you be interested? But the majority of our purchases are all contracted for. Thank you. Um, 
Thank you, Bertrand. I really appreciate your time and your willingness to share your many years of experience. And I'm sure you'll have people get in touch with you soon. So um, all the information from the uh, mini series is posted on the USFA website, including the recordings of the sessions and any materials that um, we get from the speaker. So please feel free to go to the Alliance website to look for that information. Thank you very much. You are welcome. Thank you.